Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this video. I'm here with my friend Tracy Levinson and you guys who have been following me a long time know that I absolutely love his brushes. I'm always using them. The reason why I really wanted to get back and have a chat with Tracy is Oftentimes, you guys in my community are often asking me questions about what brush I was using in the video, or um, if you see me using three or four different brushes, why am I using those different brushes? What do they do? What's my favorite scripting brush? What's my favorite brush to use on the gel plate? So it's no better time than um, just taking the opportunity to sit down with the maestro here, the man who knows it all, and uh, we can get some questions asked. I'll ask some of your most popular questions and then we'll let him um, share what he knows. For those of you who are new to my channel, just stumbling upon this video, hang out and find a little bit more about these brushes because inevitably if you hang around and you follow and subscribe to my channel, I use these brushes nearly exclusively. If I'm not using a vintage brush, I'm using um, Tracy's brushes. So Tracy, welcome to the channel. And it's a good opportunity for us to hang out again. Thank you for you know being available. Hi, Robin. Thank you so much for the nice introduction. I, I feel like I should just walk away at this point and be happy with it. And um, well, that's just so cool. Well, I haven't done one of these for a while, so I'm probably going to stumble over myself, but that's one of my areas of specialty, and uh, we'll get through it. So oh, yeah, Robin, it goes back to, I don't know quite how far, I would say 15, 20 years or so with my cousin, and he and I were really good friends when um, back then. And he told me a lot about the brush business and... Um, I decided he was influential enough that I decided after a long career of uh, being a technical consultant that I would become an artist and a brush maker. It's a story onto itself, but it's been just a phenomenal journey. It's a really rare opportunity for a chance to walk in somebody else's uh, proverbial footprints. And I had really good luck. Keith was known around most of the world before the internet existed um, okay. for the quality of brushes that he made. And um, I really like the idea of the one of a kind nature and could not believe how much of a technical challenge it is to actually make a paintbrush that's both very comfortable and also very high quality. And it's exactly everything that most modern brushes are not. And um, I won't go too far into that other than you can build something for cost efficiency or you can build it for quality. They look similar, but they're very different creatures when you get right down to it. You're right, because as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, first of all, that original brush I got from Keith over 30 years ago, she's just as beautiful today as she was then. You know, when you were talking, I, like the brushes, I never lose hairs in your brushes. Like never, I can't. And I'm using the one that I showed you earlier that I I'm, need to get a replacement for, I'll have to put an order in, is this, the, this is the, uh, the Wangi, this is the medium, I think, synthetic orange. Right. And I use this on the gel plate because I use it to do my scripting. So I'm really, you guys have seen me use it. And I never lose hairs on this. As, as rough as I am with this brush, I don't take nearly the care with this brush as I do with my, um, the scripting one. And this brush is like the workhorse of my gel plate. Right, well, the synthetics are, like, there's two things that really make it distinctive. First, I don't use a ferrule in my brushes. So if you think of a very briefly like a paper clip and you bend a paper clip back and forth, it's gonna break really quickly. Well, a ferrule is basically the same thing for a brush. It puts all the stress at one specific point. So as you use it, it doesn't take too long before it breaks. And then the second part is I use a really good glue in what I use. And I, the brushes are actually a lot longer than what they look like. This is a smaller version of the same orange brush you're using. Well, in reality, the brush bristle is close to three inches long and most of it's buried inside the handle. But because there's no ferrule on it, the stress is spread out across the majority of the length of the brush bristle. So they don't wear out and they're held in very, very well at the back end. And that's part of why they hold a lot more liquid than other ones do. And it's also part of why I put a lifetime warranty for materials and workmanship on all, all the brushes I make. And, wow, and, so you have a lifetime warranty. Yes. And oh, good. I never knew that. I mean, I, I never thought about it because I've never had to do anything with the brushes. And but, that's the beauty of it. Most people yeah, that's the beauty of it. You probably it's don't just, worry, you have to worry about getting many returns to deal with stuff. That's right. good. That's it good. happens on rare occasion, but it... Um, it's very uncommon for it to happen. I get maybe two or three returns in an average year because of something. Most typically it's because, um, well, bamboo, like anything that's a plant material, will inhale water when you use it and then it dries out. And then sometimes they'll get a split in them, but out of thousands of brushes, maybe not even one 
hundredth of one percent ever come back to me for any reason. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so one of the things we thought we would do today is everybody who's familiar with my book, Gel Play Printing, Mixed Media Art. Many of you already have this book. We know this year we went through the entire book and um, created our own art book um, with the various chapters in here. So, um, but in here, the brushes that I'm using are Tracy's brushes. For the most part, they are um, his brushes in here. And so what we've done, he and I collaborated and um, he's put a page on his website that has all the brushes that I'm using or similar to the ones that I have in here, if they weren't one of his, that um, I would recommend to be used in the place of that one. Um, Cause some of these pictures were just pictures that you kind of set up for, you know, the, the um, what do you call it? The um, step-by-steps weren't necessarily all the products I was using. Well, one of the most popular brushes since you mentioned it is the, the orange synthetic. It's a springier material. And then I'm gonna digress just for a few seconds. And I offer a total of 16 different types of bristle materials. They range from super soft to super springy. The orange synthetic is one of the springier ones, but not the springiest. It's my third springiest. Uh, boar hair is the springiest. Then I have a, what I call a stiff white synthetic, then the orange synthetic. The nice thing about the orange is that it produces a really nice point. I don't know if you can see that. I can't quite see my, there we go. Um, yeah, right there. It's a pretty fine point on it. It helps when it's wet. And um, it's super resilient. It's designed for working with thicker medium or if you just like to work with a brush that produces a nice, what's called dry brush, it's when it doesn't have a lot of paint or ink on it, and it produces a very nice uh, scripty look to it. It's great for that type of work. Um, there's I, One of the things I try and do is to match the brush bristle stiffness with the technique the particular artist likes to work with. Robin uses everything from my sables to my boar hair brushes, and so there's a wide range of techniques for those. And um, you can't really go wrong with any of them. There's a thing called suitability for a particular task, meaning that not everything works great for everything. And um, so that's one of the reasons I make a lot of brushes. That, And I get a lot of inquiries that say, can you do this? And if I get enough interest, I'm always happy to do that, which is why I have over 200 brushes that I offer at this point. Um, they're all based upon calligraphy brushes, which is to say they mostly have pointy tips to them. And they're designed to be very comfortable and very easy to work with. So the orange synthetic, I make in a few different sizes. I have what I call my itty bitty brush. These ones have a bristle diameter right about there. It's less than two millimeters. Normally they're about a millimeter and a half. And then they're offered in lengths from a half inch up to an inch. And uh, those compete with, with the finest detail brushes. They've become initially, I think it was you that asked me about that. Somebody did, and they've just become extraordinarily popular. They're probably like a quarter. I love, I love that brush. I started, where did I, I, I remember, I, I really like it in um, doing scripting, real thin scripting with watercolors. Just amazing how that springiness um, really carries the thinner consistency of the water along nicely without kind of skipping. So I right. love it. I love using and scripting with the watercolors. Right. And because it's nice and springy, it makes for feedback. It's very easy to figure out where the tip of the brush is. One of the things that's yeah. like the Russian sable, you really have to know what you're doing with the Russian sable because it provides no feedback. It's just a soft material. But the orange synthetic and some of the other ones that I make, what I call my itty bitty brush series, provide a very nice positive feedback to them. So even if you've never used the brush before, it's really easy to be able to find the tip of the brush. And that makes it easy to, to go from the finest detail work to too much broader strokes on it. And um, the brush design is such that you can use I don't have a good way of showing this, but you can work on the side of the brush like this and get a very broad script, or you can work on the tip or go back and forth, or even just going mm -hmm. from the belly up to the tip and back and forth. The brushes are all designed so that they will accommodate that very well. And uh, not everything is great with a super stiff brush. Um, for doing scripting work, you at times want hair fine lines, and that's where things like the Russian sable come in. This is a uh, Eruption sable, it actually has a hair fine tip when it's wet, but right now it's not wet. So it's a little bit bushier, but it shows the amount of hair that's on it. I'm not used to working in front of a camera, so the things I think to do put my thumb in the way. Yeah, no, you're doing amazing. No, it's good. Exactly. Because I know, I think I have, I'm going to, I was going to put the camera down a little, do a little bit of scripting while you're talking, but this one cool. is Russian sable. Very likely. It's like a medium sized one. Yeah. Like, or, and then or, this or, one. And also like using the elk. And um, yeah. 
I don't know if I brought any of those with me. No, it's the Wonky with the, Siber with the Siberian. And it right. does give it a little bit more springiness, so you can kind of control the line a little bit more. And this is one of the, the medium, the, the Wingy ones with uh, Siberian elk on them. It's a really nice springy material. It's really dense. When it's wet, again, it produces a hair fine line. And it's just super, super nice feedback. And uh, again, that's one of the things that I feature is the brushes that are provide more tactile feedback. It's I think I'm the only person on earth as a brush maker that does that type of thing because everybody's got their own preferences. And um, I found exactly. whether you're just learning or whether you like to work with different types of brushes, the better the feedback, the easier it is to use a brush. It's just a better instrument. And, yeah. um, so, and it's funny I because um, with some of the, with a lot of the brushes that you make that are good for that I often recommend for the Sumi scripting and that though that's um, in the list of the brushes that are um, um that we'll leave a link for below the video here. Um I know sometimes you make them with a, a really long extra piece and that's really good for watercoloring, but I know sometimes that extra little length can sort of get in the way for scripting because of that extra feedback that you get. Um, when people are purchasing those brushes, if they're say if they tell you that they want to use them. Um, for scripting, like like I do, the Robin's Intuitive scripting, are you able to just customize that brush a little bit to get rid of that little that little bit? Well, Sometimes I've never on, asked you. It depends on the brush bristle material. There's a particular line I make. It's called my goat and synthetic blend. It's a combination of two different types. It's a literally it's goat hair with what I call my synthetic sable. And in that particular mm -hmm. type of brush, the synthetic sable is a little bit longer. This is um, an example of it. And so you can mm -hmm. see the black part and the white part is the sable. Mm -hmm. This produces a really nice tip. It's super fine, provides great feedback. But you're right, mm -hmm. if you're trying to do really tight curves, it's going to lag a little bit behind because it's a longer brush bristle. I make them in different yeah. lengths. That helps a lot for controlling that type of thing. And I make a bunch of different brushes. So if you're looking for a really good scripting brush, um, the best, and I'm not saying that you have to buy the best, but you get in all things the quality of the brushes when it produces the results. And um, yeah, it is. Siberian Elk, my Kalinskis, my Silver Foxes all produce the finest points. And you can use them on the tip of the brush or the belly of the brush. You can do that yeah. with all of them. It's just they're much more responsive. That's the distinctive mm -hmm. feature. So the tip there, guys, is that when you're purchasing the brush, reach out to, to Tracy. He's very responsive. You send him an email and say, hey, you want to get these brushes. You want to make sure you're getting the right ones for scripting. Um, and he'll then recommend, well, if you're doing scripting like Robin, this, 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 and this one. And that way you can make sure that you're getting the brush that I've tested and that we, he and I both know will be responsive. Because to Tracy's point, um, you have to buy, I mean, it's the best, it's the better brushes that get you the results. So a lot of times people get a little frustrated because their, their scripting doesn't look like mine from the standpoint, not that we're, uh, scripting is like calligraphy. It's like handwriting. It all should look different. But the smoothness of the, the, the line, the way the line swerves, the consistency and all that, it's because I'm using really good brushes. And even when I got that brush from Keith, 30 something years ago, I remember I want to pay, I think I paid like $45 or something for that brush back then. And, and let me tell you guys, like, I was like, whoa, I'm going to pay those 50 bucks for this paintbrush, you know? Um, and it was just blowing my mind, but it was just so beautiful in my hand. I had to get it. And, and that is a, that's a purchase I've never, ever regret it. And the cost per use is less than a penny now. I mean, you know, and that brush is still going strong. So, you know, some of these brushes, like I think this, this one right here, I think is 170 or something like that. I have it. I've tried to keep it here in my drawer so I can remember it. But, um, and I think this one is 150, the elk synthetic. And it may seem like it's a lot of money for a brush, but not for what these brushes do. So I, I, I'm one of I want to really um, reiterate this. Yeah, you can get, like, I think the, my favorite brush for the gel plate, this Wangi is like, I think this one's 55 or 60 or something like that. Um, and this works beautifully. It's full synthetic, but it works wonderful for the gel plate and how I'm using them. I'm not getting scripting. I'm not scripting with this one. It's, it's just not going to give me the kind of responsiveness that I'm looking for in my line when I'm scripting. So just keep in mind that, 
it's all different types of brushes that will do different things. But it was, um, I had an aunt that years and years and years ago told me this. She said, she's never regretted her extravagances, only her economies. And we all know that you go in the store, you want that $200 handbag or whatever, pair of shoes, belt, whatever it is. And you're like, I'm not going to spend that money on it. So then you try to find a $35 one that sort of looks like it. And you wear it and, you know, a few weeks, a month later, it's falling apart. Got to go get another one. By the time you're done, you could have gotten a $200 one and still would be using it. It'd be beautiful and the belt wouldn't be falling apart. So, you know, it's just like just keeping in mind, sometimes we make a purchase around our artwork and the things that are important to us. Um, sometimes you have to pay a little bit more, but it will pay off. And I wanted to say that because I get that a lot too, you know, like, why is mine not looking like yours? Well, the brush that you just got off of Amazon that sort of looks like a calligraphy book brush, but it was, you know, $15. It's just not going to cut it. That's why. <laughs> but go ahead, Trace. Difference. Absolutely. It makes it a difference. You can't go terribly wrong with any of mine. Um, they're because the, each one is a one of a kind of creation and it's entirely handmade. I put a lot of care into it. So even if you buy one of my synthetic brushes, I make four different types of them. You're going to get really good results with it, but it's not going to be as good as a sable. They're just different creatures. That's the reason that they go the way they are. The, the finest lines come from the Russian sable and the silver fox. And uh, Robin, you use the Russian table. I think I sent you some silver foxes. I don't know if you have worked. Oh, with I them. love the silver fox too. Yeah, everything's not here. I have some of my stuff is at my studio. So yeah, you, I, have, you have a nice this collection. One, this one is the is the sable. Yeah, look at that. Oh, I'm 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 looking. I'm pointing to the wrong camera. Sure. I mean, look how immaculate that is. Tip. It just comes oh. right to this beautiful point, and that's what allows it for us to um, get going and and I did uh, a faux pas here. I didn't, these brushes were wet before we started and then they've kind of dried out. You always want to put it in what, you tell them what you're supposed to do, Tracy. Sure, well, I have an instruction that comes with every brush. It's how to break in a brush and how to, I call it warming up the brush and also cleaning them. But the thing is with my brushes, because the bristles are so much longer than anything else, even though you don't see all the bristle, it's all there. And the way to get it to work properly is to soak it real thoroughly in water. You can even run it under running water if you want, or just soak it for 30 seconds. Um, dry it off a little bit, not dry it, but like strain it with your fingers. The goal is to get all the trapped air out of it and then soak it one more time. After that, apply paint or ink as you're using it for the first time. And then the brush will just go and go and go and go. Um, they outperform anything else for how they hold and how they deliver. In part, it's because of the design I talked about, the lack of a ferrule. And also the fact that the bristles are very long, longer than anything else that you'll find. And um, it has a big impact. And um, you can see from what Robin's doing, it's um, it makes a big difference. So I, on Robin's brush, literally, if you were to go up about an inch and a half from where the bamboo handle is, that's where the bristle ends. And then I use a lot of glue at the very base of it. The, they're glued in two different ways. The brush is glued to itself. And then also it is glued to the handle so that it's very strong and uh, very resilient. So there's an example of how they can go from very fine points to very wide points and then back to a fine point again. And, um, and that's so where you get this, that's in my scripting, that's where you get sort of this, this thick and thin, if you really push down on it, you get this really fat, you know, very aggressive and uh, emotional line and then back up. And that's the beauty of these brushes. And you're not getting that with, um, with a lot of the brushes that, um, it, not like a brush, from, a brush from Amazon, that's for sure. And yeah. um, in addition to the thick and the thin, it's the transitions. It's the nuance between the finer lines and the thicker ones. And as you saw, it doesn't really show any dry brush effects until the very tail end of it. And you can see that coming out. Sometimes you want that because it's part of what a brush can do, but um, yes. necessarily. And um, that's one of the differences. Now, this one is the... um is the Wangi and the Siberian elk. And you can see the difference in line where this one, we're getting more of a transition from really super thin to moving into thick, where this really gives you pretty much a consistent stroke. Um, let's do this. If we do this like this, where? That's a great way to show the two off. Also, if you notice the Siberian elk is a little bit more, you can see a little bit more of the individual hair groupings than you can from 
the sable. That's because sable's got such fine hair to it. I forget the diameters, but they're about one. I think it's about one. Don't quote me on this, but let's say about one quarter to one fifth the diameter of a human hair. So really fine. And the severe yeah. mouth is fatter. It has a finer tip, but it's a fatter um, hair material overall. And the difference is the springiness. So it's much more responsible in the instance of the Siberian elk, but um, much better. And just what you said difference. there, you can look at it and they look pretty much, oh, like, oh, that's about the same tip. You know, if you look at it in terms of the length, I'm sorry, in terms of the length of it and um, the width, but when you really go to work with it, like you were saying, some are finer, um, the, um, the Russian sable is much finer. So when it takes the water, it's going to, it's going to become slimmer and thinner. Um, it's a little springier. And then the, the, um, the quality of <clears throat> the Siberian elk, it was to your point. I'm just really repeating what you said. No, it's it's just, you're a little so these things, sometimes you have to just, uh, first of all, these explanations help. So that when you're going into purchasing it, you have an idea of what you should be looking for or what you should be asking Tracy. Other than that, um, once you start working with them, you'll notice that the, the effects are different. Go ahead, Tracy. I'm sorry. No, well, that's exactly what you said also is that the nuance comes out of both of them, but in slightly different ways. And um, uh, there's no downside to any of them. You can't go terribly wrong with any of my brushes. Don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to suggest only use these ones, but they are better brushes and they're priced more expensively, but it's due to the rarity of the materials and how much difficulty is involved in making them. Um, some brush bristles I can form in a couple of minutes. It takes me, well, if I make a batch, it takes me a couple of days to produce a batch of like Russian sables or Siberian elk. It's a really meticulous process from end to end. And um, a lot of attention to detail goes into that. And in contrast with some of the synthetics, they're way easier to make brushes from. And, um, but even with the synthetics, I use the best materials I can get my hands on. And uh, that makes a difference in longevity. Um, as you can see from Robin's orange synthetic, I think I sent that to you four or five or six years ago. And oh, it's been a while. It gets a lot of use yeah. out of it. And, um, and I still it, use it, just she don't look that great, but she sure. still performs amazingly. See how with this same brush I did, this line thicker, bolder, and then just working with the very tip of it. Because even just at that very tip, the tip doesn't collapse. So you can work very small. I can get the same responsiveness to what I'm doing. And, uh, but just smaller, it's because that tip does not collapse. If I'm just using that very, those very few hairs, um, based on the way this brush is constructed, most time in your, in your, in your inexpensive brushes, it's it either that tip is going to collapse on you, so it just so you just get a splat, like you'll, it'll go down and you'll just get something that just keeps on doing like you know like these splat type of things. You're not going to be able to just stay on that tip, you know, um, and just dance on top of that. And so these are things that make just gives my scripting that elegance and gives it that that feeling of of just the beauty of the line gets to speak. Because the you know it's just like um it's like anything it's like working with a piano or something like that you know if you're on a um on what's the uh, I'm not thinking of it right now the baby grand the ball uh, on like a Baldwin or something like that baby grand or um, what have you you're gonna get a different um, quality the sound and the elegance of the of the music is different than if you're on one of those kind of like little um electric piano things or something like that that's you know just a cheapo hundred dollar version i mean you're it, it is what it is honestly okay good place to, to put it and um so there, there's different series of brushes i make also i use uh, basically two types of materials one is a bamboo root one is a bamboo cane and uh, the bamboo root there's two different types i use one is um, called the running roof or the, the wangi or the wangi as robin pronounces it I'm not really sure what the right pronunciation is. It's just I never know either. I've asked well, that heard, too. Wangi, well, remember, wangi, whatever. I'm like, okay. Sure, it's all the same. And so uh, this would be oh, the root, correct? No, that's a bamboo cane. That's so I mean, I meant to say cane. Bamboo cane. And, um, and this, uh, this is a root material. It's actually it grows in the ground. If you've ever seen bamboo that starts at a neighbor's yard and then 
goes all the way over to the other neighbor's yard. This is the reason yeah. why the stuff grows really aggressively. But what's cool about it, it's comfortable in a way that no other brush is. And it literally will absorb moisture off of your hand. And so you can mm -hmm. work with it for long periods of time. And it doesn't feel like any other paintbrush. First, because they're way more comfortable. They're bigger, so they're easier to use. And um, But they will continue to absorb moisture forever. And when you put it away, it'll eventually... I uh, never knew down. that. Look, I'm learning. Well, Look, guys, I'm learning things. It's very never subtle. thought about the fact that absorbs the moisture like that. That's a, And this is a combination, isn't it? This is right. And I have and one, yeah. Out of good luck, I brought the right one. So this is a bore here. This is a combination that has the windy handle on it. Then I have to have a bigger material so I can make a bigger bristle on it. So this is a combination. These are my larger diameter brushes I make basically from here to bigger than there here. And uh, this one is bore hair in particular. It's one that I grabbed. That one, this is bore hair too. This is the extra large bore hair. Right. And this is, they're, they're similar. They All my brushes, because of the nature of what I work with, they vary quite a bit for the size ranges. So I have a listing on the website for those that care that show the size ranges for different brushes. Um, the ones with the uh, wangy handles, they are, I think I have two different sizes of them here. So this one, can you see that? This one is roughly six millimeters right there. The handle itself is a larger diameter. This one mm -hmm. is roughly seven millimeters. And so this is the range for these ones, whereas a small diameter handle, this is one of the um, itty bitties that I was talking about with yeah. the longer bristle. This one is about a millimeter and a half. And then these ones can be anywhere from a millimeter and a half up to, there's another orange synthetic, about four millimeters right there. So roughly the same diameter handle but different size. That's due to the nature of bamboo and the opening. You can't really see an opening there, but but um, the opening varies with each piece of bamboo. And so I literally have to make each bristle fit each handle. And so I measure them very carefully. And then I figured out how to know just the right amount of material to put in each one. So literally every brush is a one of a kind creation, but because of the bristle materials, they have very similar characteristics. So you can also ask if you want a larger one or a smaller one within any of the different sizes. And um, I priced them. And I can, Go ahead. I can, let me, I can just say one thing with, with the synthetics. I know you have three different types of springiness. I find that if you're wanting to use a synthetic and you want to use it for scripting, go with the orange. Because the orange, either the litty, itty bitty or a half inch in, um, I think you have a half inch or an inch in, oh. um, in, the, in the small. Or the right. medium, the small. This one's a three quarter. I, I didn't grab the right one, but yeah, the, that's no, that's the right one, the three quarter. Small. Yeah, the beauty of it is from a really small diameter bristle, it's got just great feedback because it's a stiffer material. And even when it's small, it it's easier to work with. It also produces a hairline uh, tip on it. So you can't go wrong Versus with it. like the white or the other synthetic because it's still springy enough to give you feedback for you, like you said, to know where the tip is, but it's still it still gives you those sexy curves without right, it being too, too strong. So just keep that in mind, guys. If you want to go synthetic, try to look for the orange ones that he has, um, but you can always call Tracy on that one. And then of course, this, the um, the Russian Sable and um, the, the, the Fox, one. the Fox and the, um, the Siberian Elk, all are good ones for scripting, especially if you keep them on the small side. If you're if you're wanting to do scripting on papers, if you're eight and a half by elevens, nine by twelves, if you're trying to do scripting about the size that that I did here, you know, like you're trying to keep it in this kind of family of strokes, because a lot of people are trying to do it in their books or on top of maybe gel prints and stuff like that. You want to stick with the um, you know, these that are like we've been showing you guys you can describe and what the half inch, three quarter inch type of. Those are the small and medium the... diameter ones. So the brush diameters, generally speaking, the itty bitties are all under two millimeters. The smalls are from roughly a little over two millimeters to just about four millimeters. And then the mediums are from a little over four millimeters up to about seven. And I mean, you can request larger and smaller ones. They come and they go based on the bamboo that I'm working with. Um, just a little digression on that. I. The way I source my bamboo, for the most part, is I put out ads on the local um, Craigslist, and I offer to clear out grows for people, and uh, they get a really pretty um, garden out of it, and I get a trailer full of bamboo and usually a very sore back from the process. Jeez. And um, so then I, I have... I not about that either. Yeah, it's... um. Well, I found Brilliant. that... 
it's part of the variety that I offer. And literally, I never have the same thing twice in a row because I only get back to a grove. There's one group that's let me do the yard three or four times. They have like the most gorgeous stand of um, black bamboo. And they've been growing the thing for 20 years when I got there. So the thing is like a solid wall of bamboo. And I took it down by about 35%. And it just exploded two years later. So I went down and I thinned it down again. And um, I now have like the back half of my garage is about three quarters full of stuff that I got from that. A lot of it's bigger. So not a lot of people buy the bigger brushes. But um, the tips of them, the smaller ones are just beautiful work. So I tend to pull that out. And then there's another strain I have for the smaller bamboo. It's really hard to find small bamboo that has thick walls to it. So I found mm. another strain for that. Uh, it's a place out of, um, I can't think, remember where it's called. Anyway, um, I tend to buy a lot of it because bamboo has to sit for a couple of years before I can do anything with it. It wants to mm. cure completely. Okay. That way I'm sure that it's a good solid piece of bamboo. And um, there's a sweet spot where you can work with them. And um, it's usually two to three years old is where it's the best to work with. And uh, anyway, I'll and go also tell me about that. where you start source your no, no, that, thank you. That's I mean, I'm I'm still learning stuff here. Like I didn't even think about um, how you went about sourcing the bamboo. But also tell me about how you source your your hairs and stuff. It's all you know. Um, oh website. sure, thank you for mentioning that. Well, most of the materials I get are sourced by means of estate sales and uh, are otherwise are repurposed materials. Um, so like for my Kalinskis as example, I get them from, um, who do they call them? Boas and sometimes coats. Um, mm -hmm. Kalinsky, most of the hair comes from the tail. I don't want to go into too much detail for that, but that's where the best material comes from. And um, mm -hmm. rather than going to, well, first place, you can't find them anymore. They're just disappeared. And, um, but most of the material I get comes from much older stock that's been well taken care of. And so I go through primarily estate sales. What someday was, somebody's trophy that they loved ends up in the closet, then it ends up on the floor in the closet, then it ends up in a garage sale and the garage sales where I get most of it. So it is largely so that's so, perfect. Right. So for those of you who are maybe be concerned about, oh, well, you know, are there, you know, animals dying for the sake of these brushes? No, Tracy's getting everything from old coats and, you know, skins and things like he said that, um, you know, had already been, you know, um, used many, many years ago. And so it's a whole upcycle, up upcycling, recycling, yeah, you know, repurposing. Things. So, yeah. So it's very, you know, very, um, you know, ecologically, you know, friendly and, uh, you know, progressive as we live in these times where we have to become concerned about those things. And I do believe in reusing um, materials that are already out there. So I, that's what I also love about your products that they're. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. And then um, the handles, of course, bamboo is one of the most renewable resources that are out there. It is. You can't go wrong with it. Um, many of the materials they use also, such as goat hair, um, such as um, pony hair, they are, the animals actually get shaved. And uh, so it too is renewable. And um, yeah. I try and lean that way as far as I can. I try and be environmentally responsible in everything that I make. Um, I'm a small scale producer. So a lot of the things that people that can do things in a massive scale, I just don't do. The average brush company will probably turn out more brushes in a day than I will ever make. And I'm completely fine with that. I, I never wanted yeah. to be a real a volume producer. Um, but because, it's an art form too. I mean, this is about right, the art well, of, of brush making as well for you. So I've been a really lucky dog in what I've done because I'm I'm kind of a unicorn in the world of, of the artistry. Um, I've been able to get into the top shows in the country, um, both because I do something that's really rare you're not likely to encounter another brush maker anywhere and um also because i dare say i do a pretty good job of it and um, i had <laughs> I, one of the I, I best say. teachers in my cousin keith to get me started and uh, he gave me the general form factors i actually never learned that much about brush making from him we talked about the business he told me about the shows and how much fun they were to do and um but i literally taught myself how to make brushes based in part by pictures of his brushes and when I first started out, I bought brushes from every manufacturer and I found out what they all did really well and what they did not so well. And mm -hmm. uh, I made sure that I didn't do any of the things that were not done that well. I think I'm the only brush maker that offers the warranty that I do. And that's because I'm not really worried about it. A small percentage, I work with bamboo. It's gonna have small problems. Sometimes on rare occasions, they'll get hairline cracks on them that I'm not even aware of. I look at everything with a magnifying glass and. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just don't show up until after they're in use for a while. 
And, um, and I could tell you this one right here, this, like I said, this, this, um, this Wongi orange in the, um, this is, I think this is the medium, right? The synthetic medium, this one. Yes, right. I'm telling you, this brush is absolute workhorse. Like you said, I've probably had what, about five or six years? I mean, how long? It's right. been a while. This is one of the first yeah, ones, that, you know. And um, I keep, literally, it's in water because when I'm gel printing, I'm having to, you know, lay the paints down, you know, I take it out the ink. I'm, I'm brushing and scripting with it. And then I have like a little jar of water that I stick it in because I don't want the paint to dry on it in between me getting ready to pull the next print. Then I pull it out. I have a, um, a towel where I get the water out of it. I put it back in ink and I go again. So this thing has been in, I mean, look at it. It has been in water, baby. Used and to be it, and it's beautiful. Like it's no cracks in it. I feel right. like that ink almost has made the bezel stronger. Am I sumi or something? I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I yeah. mean, it's just amazing. I mean, so this brush, yeah, she's really held up. But the, the wingy material doesn't crack. Bamboo can if it's saturated for too long and it dries in because it will expand and contract. But this stuff, because it's a root material, it's actually designed to process water. And um, Which makes sense. Oh, my God. That would make sense. So they, they're very resilient, and they're also uniquely comfortable. You never get tired of holding them because no two pieces on my brush are the same. It's very comfortable. It's much larger in diameter than a traditional brush. Even my, my itty bitties are much larger than traditional brushes, and they're all designed to be very comfortable. So you can't and go. You, you rotate it in your hand. Is when you first get yours, you just kind of play with it. I just when I pick up a new one, I just rotate it, and you'll always find that place where this for me, this knuckle. That right there, this knuckle, sure. that part of my my finger just lays beautifully. This one actually has that divot right there at that right. knuckle, at this knuckle, right there. Right. So generally, that's where I'm holding mine, right there, where that divot in that knuckle is, and it just it gives a lot of stability. Um. So, but every brush is different, so you'll find your own little place where you can rest your finger in, and then it's just like an extension of your finger. Which is what I love about the natural brush, you know, canvas as well. Right. Another cool thing about my brush bristles is that they're not completely symmetrical as a commercial brush would be. So you find if you rotate the brush around a little bit, you get a slightly different response from it. And it yeah. actually is not, it increases the value of the brush because it produces a lot of nuance that you can't get out of anything else. So the, right. the lack of symmetry is by design. The ones like the Russian Sables, they do it to a much lesser degree. It's because the hairs are so fine. And but a bigger brush, it's just going to have more variations in it. Like going back to the boar hair brush again, if you were to put this um, with a more viscous material, um, it actually will produce a bit of a point to it. But uh, yeah, you have the same brush there. But yeah. uh, otherwise, it produces a really nice variety of material. And you're not going to use something like that for doing fine detail work, obviously. No, this is for your larger. I mean, for me, it's for my larger, more expressive, expressive kind of paintings and stuff that I'm doing. Yeah, and, I agree. Uh, and if you're using like something like a very heavy viscous material, like let's say a traditional oil paint with that, um, it actually produces not a bad point. It's a big brush, so it's not going to produce what a Russian sable is going to produce. But it's no, it's, but for it's, the it's, medium, it's it's right. amazing. Yeah. So um, what I was so probably what we want to do is you know kind of sort of wrap it up. I think we've actually answered a lot of you guys' questions. I know the ones I get a lot, and I know you've thought about the ones that come to you. But Tracy, how do people, we'll make sure you put we put your website below. I know you have a newsletter that you send out regularly. Um, there'll be a link for that or a way to connect with that because that's where you keep your community updated on what's happening. Um, what would you like to, you know, like in, in closing, how would you, um, you know, what are some parting thoughts that you'd like the community to understand about the Levazon brushes? Well, we've covered so much. The, the major details is, is just to summarize what we've covered. The brushes are all made renewable. They are literally one of a kind creation, each one of them. Um, they have been, you can actually find, in addition to Robin, we've done a couple of interviews now. I think this is our second. Um, I, I can't tell you how honored I am to say this, but there are literally thousands of videos made by artists around the world that show off my brushes. I never saw that coming. Um, I used to just hawk my brushes at art shows, which I was lucky to get into, and then I made it into top shows in the nation. It's, um, what do they call it, imposter syndrome. Um, <laughs> I got into the Smithsonian show, and I couldn't believe some of the people that were right next to me 
And um, I still get embarrassed talking about it, but <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? But my booth gets absolutely mobbed. And um, right. anyway, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I've been very fortunate. And I have, I'm it's just a huge following of people that love the brushes. Robin, we yeah. loved them before I was even making them. So I'm yeah, but I was so them. happy to, to reconnect and to reconnect with the Lebazon brushes, and then to meet you and and become fast friends. And I think that um, even when I'm scrolling through YouTube, sometime um, when I have when I do have downtime, and I come across an artist, and they and they'll have your brushes there. Oh, there's Tracy brushes you know I just think it's so cool when I see them like that so I'm, I'm so happy that your um your business does well and that you just produce this quality art product and you know I can't shelter it from the mountains enough times to you know for people to come and experience um you know one of your brushes well thank you it's really an honor to be able to spend some time with you on air and um I, I encourage anybody to take a look at Robin's book it is a really cool publication even as a work of art itself. The uh, photography is superb. I worked as a photographer for many years. It was one of my first passions when I was young, and the work is second to absolutely nothing. And so I should be very proud of that. And then the context. And then my daughters, who 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 did the photography, both of them went to school for. Um... I got their degrees in photography, one photography, graphic design, film and television, and the other one, um, photography and uh, theater was a kind of a, a, a major. So they're the ones who did oh, the photos really from my book. It's crazy. It, it is really first rate book, as is the text, and it can walk you through learning a lot of different techniques. One of the things, I think it was Patty Parrish that introduced us a long time well, ago. What happened is that Patty and I, yeah, well, no, what happened, yeah, it was. What happened is that Patty was asking me about that brush. And I said, Patty, I can't seem to find um, the Levison any longer. I'm looking for Keith. And um, and I had been looking and then, and I had been looking for years. And so by, by the time she asked me, I probably hadn't looked for a couple of years. And uh, and I said, I don't know. Well, in the middle of the night, like probably two o'clock in the morning, because that's what Patty does. She sends me a text and she says, Robin, I think I found them. And I'm like, really? She said, I'll reach out to them. So that, so she reached out to you and I'm, I'm like, yeah, those are the brushes. So it's really funny how that came about. Yeah, so Patty was able to, to find you in ways that I, had kind of given up on so and that she's my buddy i love patty so oh, she's a great person she's a, she's a wonderful lady she has a youtube channel too for those of you who don't know patty totally parish um she's on youtube um that's patty p-a-t-t-i totally parish i'll make sure to put a link below but you got to check that lady out but yeah so she was the one who did my uh my leg work and found you i was so happy and uh and i was happy that i found you i remember keith mentioned you a couple of times and he knew a lot of people, so it says something really good about you. And um, so you guys had a good friendship. Yes. Oh, going back a long time. Anyway, I'll, I'll let it turn it over to you. Definitely. All righty. Your book. Well, if this has been it. great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy, for making this happen. Um, so, yeah, guys, we'll put all the links below. We'll make sure you have everything that you need. Um, you can see Tracy is very much um, an available and um, very open and easy person to connect with. So any questions you have. Do not hesitate to reach out to him. He will take the time to make sure that you understand the product. He knows my the brushes I like implicitly. He, you know, like so anything he recommends, um, just go with it because he knows his stock and he knows what I like. And so, um, so yeah, I would just say, you know, that that's the best way to do is to reach out. So yeah, any questions you have, put it below the video. Um, and Tracy and I will monitor this this uh, video. It'll be on YouTube, and we'll both you know try to answer these questions and direct you um, into whatever it is that we missed or didn't think about sharing in this um, in this offer today. So again, thank you, Tracy. I look forward to. I've just a sideline. I asked Tr Tracy to do me a really big brush. We're going to go in collaboration. I've got to send him some pictures and stuff, but this one proves to be pretty. Um, if we pull this off, it's because she's going to be a monster brush, but uh, you guys will get to see it. But yeah, so Tracy and I have enough behind the scene things, projects that we'll continue to work on. But it's always nice to hang out publicly with you, Tracy. Thanks again for being here, for sure. An honor and a pleasure, Robin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Well, thank you guys. As normal, you know, um, 
hit the bell and uh, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Please thumb this video up because thumb up and share because this pushes it out and more people will find out about this product and about the brushes that many of you already know and love. So until next week, love you guys. Take care. Have an amazing, amazing um, week. And as always, happy creating. So much love. Bye-bye.